Ryzen 5000 might actually be able to handle 4 GHz memory this time and what motherboards are going to be ready for Zen 3. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently a slide was leaked by Technopat which shows some really interesting and promising information about Ryzen 4000 DDR4 memory overclocking. So if we go ahead and we take a look at this slide here, it does have a lot of interesting information on the F clock, U clock, and M clock and why it's all important. But we'll get into that in a second. What I really want to focus in on here is at the very bottom where it states, quote, DDR4 4000 is to Ryzen 5000 series as DDR4 3800 was to AMD Ryzen 3000 series. Good luck. And the the reason why I think this is actually really important is because if you don't really know anything about memory overclocking on Ryzen, well essentially there's actually a lot of DRAM latency from the Ryzen chiplets to the memory because of the infinity fabric. So. And, you know, that infinity fabric is tied to in a one-to-one -one ratio to the memory clock that you have. So the higher the memory clock that you can achieve in the same one-to-one -one ratio as the F clock, well, that means the less DRAM latency you're going to have overall. And that's actually really important because that allows you to get higher and higher gaming performance as gaming is very latency sensitive. So as it turns out, when you're overclocking your Ryzen processor, it makes a whole lot more sense to spend time tweaking the timings on your RAM and getting your RAM speed as high as you can in a one-to-one -one ratio with the F clock versus spending time overclocking the actual actual cores on the Ryzen CPU as they come, you know, they're pretty fast out of the box already. So you're not going to get a whole lot out of it that way. So this information is actually pretty interesting because in the past, basically all of the Ryzen 3000 series processors were capable of hitting up to 3600 megahertz um, DDR4 memory when you were doing some overclocking, but only the best chips such as the Ryzen 9 chips and sometimes the Ryzen 7 chips could actually hit a 3800 megahertz memory clock. So this time seeing on the slide here that they're saying that DDR4 4000 is to Ryzen 5000 as DDR4 3800 was to Ryzen 3000, that leads me to believe that the best chips this time around are going to be capable of hitting 4 gigahertz on the memory end. So if you're someone who's into memory overclocking, if you can get a nice kit of DDR4 4000 megahertz memory and you can tweak the timings down to like CAS 14, you could be looking at a CPU that gets even faster gaming performance out of the box. Because taking a look at the various performance charts that they showed for these upcoming Ryzen 5000 series processors, I noticed that even though it has a massive single threaded jump, uh, you know, not all games were actually seeing a huge jump in performance, at least not as big as I was expecting, because, you know, it, it turns out when you look at hardware and box numbers, at least, it, when I look at the 3900X versus the 10900K, I believe, it looks like it's only around 7% slower on average in games. And so, you know, to get a massive boost, I believe they're saying somewhere around a 26% boost from the 5900X versus the 3900XT on average, and then only seeing it get around 7% faster than the 10900K and their numbers isn't actually that impressive. So I'm assuming that there's probably still a little bit of a DRAM latency problem that's around because even though they've moved to the eight core CCX design, so you don't have to move across the infinity fabric to go from four cores to the other four cores, well, there's still infinity fabric there to go from the actual cores to the memory itself. And so if the infinity fabric hasn't been improved that much, well, then of course, there's still going to be a little bit of a DRAM latency penalty there. So if you're able to get your DRAM really high, such as DDR4-4000, and then you get your cast latency really low, well then I think that could actually make these CPUs even better at gaming. But, you know, with all that talk out of the way, of course I'll be getting my Ryzen 5000 series chips in the future here, and I'll definitely be doing all kinds of investigations into that overclocking and whatnot. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the actual compatibility, because of course if you're going to be overclocking these CPUs, you're going to need a motherboard that works with it. And there's been a whole lot of confusion as to what you need to do to be ready for these chips, and what motherboards are going to be the best ones to buy. So taking a look at another official AMD slide here, we can see that it states, get ready, AMD 500 series motherboards require a BIOS with a GISA 1.0.8.0 or newer for post slash boot already available. And then at launch, users should upgrade to a BIOS with a GISA 1.1.0.0 or newer for the best experience on November 5th. And then we'll talk about the 400 series chipset in just a second here. But going a little bit deeper on that, after asking around everyone I knew about this issue, because I, even I was a little bit confused, it turns out that a lot of the motherboards that have been you know, uh, produced in the last month should already have this BIOS available. So if you're someone who's going out and buying a new motherboard, 
Hopefully, if you bought one in the last month here, you should be good just out of the box to plop in one of these processors and it'll just work. But of course, you should on day one get the absolute newest Ajisas to get the maximum performance and stability for these new processors. But in any case, you should be able to boot with it, though. Um, if that's not the case, it looks like if you do have a, a motherboard with the BIOS flashback or Q flash option on there, then you can just download the BIOS to a USB and then you can plug it in with no processor whatsoever or just uh, even if it's not booting up with the new processor, you can do it that way. And then it should be able to do it without even having to boot up. So there's that option. And then if you also have, you know, a motherboard that you don't have the correct BIOS and you don't have Q flash or a BIOS flashback, well, then your third option is you can go to AMD and they will apparently, if you sign up for their little program, they'll send you a really cheap uh, CPU so you can actually do it that way. Of course, that's a huge he uh, headache and a massive pain. And hopefully on release, there will have like little stickers on the box that say like Ryzen 5000 series ready because I know they did that with the B450 motherboards so hopefully they do that this time around but if you're someone who already has an X570 or B550 motherboard those motherboards you know of course you're in a great spot now because then you can just go ahead and update your BIOS right now so that you're ready for it and then once you have the newest BIOS then you can slap that uh, CPU in there and then on day one get the even newer BIOS of course for the best stability and performance but now we have to talk about the Ryzen 400 series chipset which so for the B450 and X470 70 uh, motherboards they are going to support these new chips but apparently it looks like officially at least the AMD's responses that on release date don't expect it it might be a little bit later so on their little slide here they state uh quote BIOS updates for AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors currently in development with motherboard partners and customers should expect first beta BIOSes for AMD 400 series motherboards starting in January 2021 so yeah that's a little bit of a ways away here and I know there have been several several people who have already stated uh, motherboard manufacturers that they are definitely going to go forward with it. So I'm not 100% sure if absolutely every motherboard manufacturer is going to be releasing a BIOS that allows you to do this, but I would assume that they probably all are at least looking into it because if one person does it and you don't have it, well, then it's a competitive advantage. So I would assume that that would pretty much force all of them to kind of go and do it, but we'll just have to wait and see. And it looks like, unfortunately, yes, those 400 series motherboards, while they do support them, um, they probably won't support it on launch. I'd be very surprised if any of them do, but it's certainly possible. Though, you know, that's not too bad if you're a 400 series motherboard owner, because if you are you're probably a budget buyer and you know price is a big deal to you and to be honest with you these Ryzen 5000 series uh, processors especially the lower end ones you know they're not as you know, cost effective as they used to be because okay sure you had the 16 core and 12 core going up $50 that's not a huge amount I think it's like 7 and 10 percent price increase but when you go all the way down to the 6 core option it's a 20 percent increase in the price so the price to performance increase for you isn't quite as great as it should have been and so maybe you're better off waiting for say a 5600 instead of 5600x or a 5700x versus a 5800x because both of those 5800x and 5700x 600x processors in my opinion are grossly overpriced considering AMD's uh, track record where in the past they had much better budget options but hey that's just what I think what do you think about Ryzen 5000 series memory overclocking I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so Nvidia and Intel drop prices also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed